different VMs in there, one for each kind of machine. You only need one of those normally. And then you need the the moves of which changes process. And please pass around the, the memory sticks. Um, well if we miss this it's not the uh, this is something to work along with, so please pair it with someone with a computer. Alright, are you sure? Oh yes. Prefer people pairing, so if you would say you see, so you can join with someone, that makes it much easier. Okay. How about we have still a camera? Fifty percent. Yeah. And there, 
and the sides are power woods, but you need a long head for that. Um, I guess so. If you just came in, uh, this is a workshop where you can program, so please take your computer or join up with someone with a computer. Do you want us to install stuff for you? Uh, yes, I want you to have on your disk one of those VMs, yes. the one fitting to your key, and the three other files. Moose changes, moose image, and file resources. Uh, Moose is a framework on top of Faro. Faro is a, a small part, and Moose is the visualization and the software analysis framework. Make nice pictures. Yeah, the introspection is already in the small part already, but uh, the nice pictures uh, is much easier with uh, Moose. <coughs> And then we hope that you are able to start this by dragging the moose image on the VM. That's the way I do it on my Mac. So let me show how that works. That's what helps me do it. Other platforms may have more difficult ways of starting. Uh, can you do it once again? Sorry. Just uh, then I brought the... On a Mac, I just dropped the image on the virtual machine. Of course, if you have a new Mac OS machine, then you have to tell it that it is allowed to run the case to which I'm not signed. Which is something you can do in the settings, and otherwise work from something you download. Does everyone have the stick yet? May I see hands for who has a running image? Yes. Running? Running image? Yes. Yes, I Okay, who's having no loss? Everyone tell about the point. You know, well, not with the window open, but at least have a window open. I guess this one. Well, there's a key. If you put the cable in there, yes, you can. You can put it a bit. Very old Really? <laughs> 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 
Who has more sticks? Okay. I have a problem with okay. it. So, the basic idea is that small talk um, for people who already know how to program. Uh, somehow looks like an old fashioned or strange environment, but it has windows, it has text, so it should be usable for people who used to make clips or those kind of environments, Visual Studio. Um, the problem with Smalltalk is that it's much older than those systems. It was uh, developed before the Macintosh was there, and there are a number of things that Macintosh introduced that made things simpler to use, which are simply not in Smalltalk systems. The, the discoverability of things is on Mac or later Windows. Um, there was some very clear pressure to make sure that everything should be easy to find. At that moment, small talkers were already using those systems for a long time, and so they did not feel that need. And so there are some things which you will find here uh, strange, and will help you get through those. Good. So, um, oh, I have some. Thank you. Do we all have the image started now? Everybody? And we just need to have the workspace, not this room. No, no, you have the workspace. Yes. Everybody? Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, so if everybody got this started, then please try to use the left mouse and try to see if we can get to the settings. In appearance, we have use free type. We want that off and on again because this system is configured so it does not read all the fonts from the system. And if we click it out and on, it will reread all the fonts. That helps us with this presentation. If you put the cursor on the FO tutorial open presentation. Did it work? Pre type yeah. setting? On and off? Yeah. Uh, off and on again. Then if you do a right click and do I do it, then we are supposed to get this display. Uh, you only have the role without the presentation uh, because you don't have uh, to show it on a large screen. Everybody got it up? Who has not?
Okay, anyone? We are all there. Good. Yes, okay. That's okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Smalltalk is a very, very simple language. The parser for the language is about ten times smaller than that for Java or something like that. Uh, we have only six keywords, self, super, this context, true, false and nil. Everything is an object and we have a very powerful environment. Let's take a look. Left mouse and we create a new workspace. Just follow along. C plus four. Workspace, yeah. Um, I can do right mouse click and do print it, but I can also do on my Mac command P, on Windows it might be control P or alt P, please take a look. Hmm? Yeah. Um, in a workspace by default, uh, if you put a cursor on a line, that line is going to be executed, inspected, you can take a look. Command I, inspect, I'm taking a look at what the result is. This is a small integer with value 7. Mm. And with lots of different methods available to run on it. Is there a way to do it without a mouse? Is there a way to do it without a mouse? Command P. Command P, yes. Command P. Yeah, if you take a look at the menu, then you see that it has letters behind it. And that's supposed to be the command. With the Mac, it's command. Uh, on Windows, it's control. It could, could be alt. Could, yeah, could be alt, uh, depending on your uh, keyboard setting. Yeah, shortcut? Yeah. So, this might not be as you expected. If we take a look what 3 plus 4 times 2 is, then we see that we have left to right evaluation. And uh, if you want a difference, then you should use uh, parent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
what do we have anymore? We have a test runner, which shows us all the tests in the system. Yeah. I can select the bottom one and can say, well, run with those. Yeah. Running all tests in the system takes a lot of time. Are there some things to arrange windows, like into tiles or something? Can I like somehow tell it to manage the windows for uh, not in this system. There are packages to do that, but I have not included them. Yeah. Mm. And there has been interesting work in Squeak on making that automatic. Yeah. Uh, um. So, um, one of the things we find interesting in Smalltalk is uh, test-driven development. What I can do don't do that with me, is make a new test case. How do I make a, a class here? Well, everywhere where I have text, I can do things. So, if I say that I want a subclass of test case, and I tell it save, or accept, Command S. Then I have created a class. There is no, or there used to be no menu entry to create a class. In a small talk, you normally open a browser. This is a browser, and you over you type over something and you make with that a new class. If I want it to be not an AA, but in somewhere else. Then I could say um, there is some. Uh, then I could move it there. So that's what we see here is the packages of classes, the classes, the category of methods, and the methods of a class. So there are quite a few classes who have that have lots of methods, and then it makes sense to categorize them, have accessors separate from behavioral things. Uh, a bad example of that is object. Object. And then I can say command B for browse. Then I get a new browser. And we see that we have way too many categories of, of methods. Even so many that it gets slow. It's really slow. Do you know how many methods object has? Yeah. Method dict? Oh, well, I think you can say all selectors. Oh, all selectors is nice, yes. That's only three digits. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's the reason why we are cleaning up uh, Squeak and uh, Enviro. Uh, this is uh, a lot. Yours works? No. Good. How can we get to this magical window? Here? Which magical window? Uh, this, which I see. this one? What I did, I uh, just said I want uh, some class. And then I said, hmm, 
where is my... Oh shit. System bro, system bro. Ah, okay. Hmm? Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. In small talk, we invented test-driven development, and we do that a bit different there. We assert something. This tells me that this method cubed does not exist in the system. There, that is why it's red. Doesn't need type information for that. I need to enter my name. And then I say, well, I expect it to be cubed. And then I can run this test. And then it tells me, message not understood, small integer cubed. 3 is a small integer, cubed is a message which I don't understand. Well, where was that? That was in test cubing. He said, there, I don't understand it. Well, then we go back there and then we can say, oh. Well, uh, perhaps I want to create that. And where would I want to create that? Small integer is in a hierarchy. Uh, inherits from integer and that is from number. I think I want that in number. And I don't want to classify that. <coughs> and then, well, I could say something like uh, return. This is a symbol for returning a value. If you don't return anything special, then you will return the object itself. Self times self times self. <coughs> Except. Well, and um, continue. Oh, let's do some more continue. Yep. Oh, I should have restarted that computation probably, but. Anyone know why this does fail? Yeah. A one time cell was uh, too much. Or even nine hmm? My? Three cubed is 27, not nine. Three cubed is 27, not nine. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to, to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. That might help. <laughs> um, yeah. <coughs> so. What we see is that we can have a very short feedback loop from having the writing the red test to creating the code and just implementing what we need in the debugger and continue running in the debugger. If I had restarted to the right point, I could even have gone to a green test result in one time. Mostly I don't do that, mostly I just let it go and then uh, restart the test. But you can keep on going in the debugger, changing code in the debugger, creating methods, creating classes. We're going to do that. So. Where can I see the cube? What? Where can I see the cube if you define? Where is it defined? Well. Uh, if you don't know, then you uh, ask someone cubed. That was the one? Yeah. Yeah. We select it. And then we ask, do we have any implementers of it? Also, command M. 
that's the one where we use the keyboard shortcuts a lot. And then it tells me that in the numbers package, in the number class, in as yet unclassified, I have defined a method cubed. The other way around, tup, tup, tup. who is sending this, tells me, well, this test cubing is sending this. If I only get one result back, I directly get a browser. If I select something which has more senders, or implementers, then I get a list. We have 150 implementers of open. And I can browse them. And if I want a browser on the class itself, I can click browse and then get to the place. So Smalltalk systems have lots of different browsers and inspectors and tools to look at code. Um, this is the flat view. I can also look at the hierarchy. So then I have the inheritance lookup. So that was everything is an object, very powerful environment, um, and we have a very a very simple language, but a very large library. And the different dialects of uh, Smalltalk have different libraries. There is ANSI standard, which defines the basic stuff, uh, but stuff on top is different. Um, dum, dum. And on top of Faro, I then loaded uh, software for uh, software and data analysis. And we can show that if we take a look here at the FO browser. And if we do then do it and open. We have a few ways of looking at the code. Oh. That's a bug. Hmm. So what we see here is that for one of the packages, forum, I uh, made some pictures of the classes which are in there. So if we take a look uh, where we find this FO browser, command B browse it. Hmm? Which part doesn't work? If you select the line, can't yeah. you open the browser or can't you open the... What I did here was select and do... So this is a class browser. It uh, shows me that in announcements I have four classes, in application I have two, four, six, eight, nine, two in browser, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten in model, and a few in tests. And if I then take a look, then you can see that we have the five packages here. And that it thinks that one of Oops, no, that's, uh, 
it shows inheritance with the lines and it shows something about the size of each class in the size of the rectangle. I guess the number of lines of code is the vertical axis and the number of methods is the horizontal axis and the color is the number of lines of code. So, it's different ways of looking at the code. Yeah? If you take a look at this browser, uh, then you can see that this complexity tool, which we're looking at, is for Smalltalk a uh, too large method. This browser is designed to uh, be optimal for methods of, length, of code length about uh, 10 lines. And By designing it that way, it is easier for people to make short methods because uh, long methods are annoying to look at. And well, what you can see that we are doing here is I'm collecting the packages. My package organizer, the default one, I ask for its packages and I select from them I, the select gets a block and that gets passed in all the packages. The P is package P and I ask the P for its package name. I want, want to know if it begins with forum. And there, from that one I want the packages. Then I make a set of classes and all packages. Well, if we just take a look. Oh. No, but that's sorry. Explore it. This is one R package. with name forum and with classes those 31 one um, this is not a really good example because this is code that is partially deprecated, so we have some strange things going on here. Um, well, but the basic thing is that if I inspect this, then I get a list of all the packages. <coughs> and if I select one of those, I can ask them for their classes. And I, if I have collected those classes, I can make a view with rectangle shapes. And in those view I get nodes. 
the packages. So those five packages I get in there, and for each of them, I put a new shape rectangle with the width based on the number of instance variables of the class <laughs> and a height based on the number of methods and the fill color based on a normalization of the number of lines of code. So the lowest is going to be green and the highest is going to be red. And then I put them in a tree layout and tell me that I want a connection, a, a line from the superclass of the package of the class to my to itself. And the whole gets in a grid layout. What does the view do? The view is the thing that shows shows this. The canvas, yeah. 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 I think the other ones are easier. No, no, no. Okay. So where we are going to work with today is this forum package. This uh, forum has uh, uh, questions <coughs> and answers, and if you take a look at a web browser. and go to port 8181. <coughs> then you can browse the applications installed in your image. Yes. And we're going to take a look at Agile Overflow. So basically, in this Moose image, we have a web engine running, which runs on port 8181, which runs Seaside, and which runs this program application. Works on the works on the Safari browser. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you can enter a name. No, you don't have to do anything. You just go to oh, um, you do browse. Okay. Uh, use that as your default. Yes, and then you go to Agile Overflow. Okay, does everybody have the web browser open? Does that work? Because there can be firewall problems. Sorry, you did browse? No, sorry, sorry, those Okay, just like with local hosts. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yes, and then browse on the right side. Yeah? Oh, you just register. Uh, I don't think there are any users in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you should ask some questions.
so just put some data in there. Does it have data based on the background or? Uh, small talk systems are generally image based. And an image is basically a document of all the objects you are currently working with. Um, so if you don't want to lose what you are doing here today, then please save the image when you want to quit the image. How, how can I scale it? Hmm? How can I scale it then? Uh, there are different ways. You can uh, run this application on multiple VMs. Uh, you can run it on Gemstone, which is basically a persistent image, um, which scales to, uh, <coughs> I think they have systems where they have 90 million transactions an hour or so. Um, so the, the scaling is not really the problem. Uh, <laughs> if you have the money to uh, scale to that size, then you can scale to that size. In Faro, this image is a 32-bit image and uh, 4 gigabytes here. But you can have persistence options if you want to, but you don't need it for this. Um, you may notice that there is no way to log out here. Um, we are working with a brownfield environment where uh, there is code, but it's not all working, and there is functionality missing, like a typical development project. Uh, so. What we are going to do is take a look at the exercises. Oh, uh, this I forgot. Seaside is the library we use for web applications. Nice DSL widgets, support for the several little JavaScript libraries. And we are now getting to this. So, this first exercise we are going to do together, and then there will be exercises for you to do on your own. So, on the place where 5073 is shown, yeah, the number of points we have in this system, we want to have a button allowing us to log out when logged in. Um, So we need to find the place uh, Well, in this case we can say this text uh, sorry. Where is it? Extended search method strings with it. And then we see, yeah. <laughs> now, the thing about using Smalltalk is that you have to navigate around your code a lot. And it's an object oriented system, so the behavior is distributed over lots of different objects. So you have to find the right objects to make up your changes. And we are going to show you lots of different ways of finding, finding your code. 
and in this exercise I shows a few of them. So you see that this, this text I could find, um, and it's in, in uh, five places. So ground to five places, that's okay, that works. Then I can find it Oh, so did, I did in the. I can, but every place where I can type text, I can select, uh, type that, select it, do the right mouse click, do the extended search, and say I want the method strings with it. Command Shift E. And then I get these results. And that's, well, basically I assume that this Stefan is dependent on my having typed Stefan as a name, so I don't know how to find that. I could have taken a look at chat and maybe find if that's close by. Huh? Chat. String with single quotes. Let's find. Tup, tup, tup. Um, do I need the quotes for that? Perhaps not. Well, no, this is the one which is showing the, those things. And then I could, of course, say, well, I want to browse this, because this does not show this really the place where the login is happening. And then I see that I get a place with lots of rendering. And I see here a render top user on. So that might be the space. And that is actually the place where this is. <laughs> So, what do we have for hints here? Uh, we found that. Well, then of course, um, we can say, well, I want uh, something like that. Not in all instructions, sorry. Not in all instructions? We just get instructed. Stuck at what point? We can follow. Okay. You have the workspace open? Yeah. Yes. You have the text 5073. There will be found five options. Okay. Then, yeah. then you can close them. Okay, yes. But this is the exercise. So that's probably not the interesting one. So you probably yeah. choose. Find uh, the one. Uh, which one? Uh, which this one? Uh, which 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 one? Uh, so when I started learning small talk, this was really the difficult part. This thing about classes and methods and the uh, strange order of arguments, um, that's easy. Getting, to, getting used to using all those different kinds of inspectors and browsing and findings, references, methods, that's what I mean. where, where I needed someone to show me that. Uh, Philippe uh, showed me the use of senders and implementers after I had been doing Smalltalk for two years without knowing that that is useful functionality to use. It's essential information. The senders and implementers 
I can use it. At the hour now, mm -hmm. all the time, um, I didn't know that. Because I use it like I was used to a Delphi or a Visual Studio or an Eclipse. And current Eclipse has servers and implementers, but at that time it was not easy to use like that. So what we see here happening, if we take a look, this is a part of Seaside. Seaside has a domain-specific language, a canvas object which has methods which help us send, uh, create HTML. So this canvas space is going to be translated uh, to an uh, HTML space. Uh, non-breaking space and this text well let's see if it changes if I do a re reload and now I see that of course I am logged out because I waited too long then I need to log in again and then we see that that is the right place where we are going to make the change as soon as you change the text, it will appear. You don't need to save it. <laughs> um, sorry, that I was too fast, of course. What I did is I saved the method. Oh. If I, you can see the triangle there in orange. Yeah. If I then do Command S for save, yeah. it's changed. If I don't do a redraw here, I. Don't. Did I make a change? Oh no, I did not make a change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then with a redraw it will generate the HTML again for me. So this gives me a very fast feedback loop for creating web applications. Where did the all? How did the I save what I change. Yes. What I should do after that? Well, go to the browser, to the web browser, and refresh it. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, you need to be logged in still. Uh, I think we have time out of 10 minutes or something like okay, that. Okay, maybe because. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. So, we are following the exercise. One of the other things we can do is not put a text there, but put a submit button there. That's where we want logout to happen. Can I redraw that? Yes. So. How do you style this button? Can you do like CSS around this button? Or? Yes. Well, actually, the normal submit button is the plain HTML one, and of course, you can style it with CSS. Uh, but I created, I did it with Bootstrap, so we should use a slightly different one. Okay. And that okay. is the TBS button and the B extra small. Okay. Did, any, did everyone have the button already? Yes. Does anyone have any way of moving the image into a very small card? To what? The SD card? Yeah. The micro SD? Cool.
Yeah. In Smalltalk, methods are compiled independently. So if I save it, it's compiled and works at the same time. If I have an error in there, it will just put some text in between. So. Um. Then it tells me that there is something wrong with what I did. Um, if I wanted to compile, I need to remove that. The language from the canvas was ex extended with Twitter bootstrap specific commands, and so we have a Twitter bootstrap button, and we want the extra small variant in this case. So it looks a bit more in the same style. It's more fun to work along. Can you can you show again um, how to create methods? Does he show Yes, um, creating methods. Ha! That's the same that's the same thing as with creating if I want to create a method. Um, I think there's something missing in the wrong to understand uh, Yeah. Um, well, mostly I just uh, find the class where I want to do it. I find the method. Yeah. So methods are on the very right side. Yes, methods are on the very right. And this thing is categories of methods. So if I take a look at all, then you have quite a lot. And the accessors are this one. And the categories, are they are... Do I, my, or myself, can specify any category? Or yes, you can specify categories. There are predefined ones predefined which you should reuse yeah, if they are fit. If they fit, yeah. So it's like meta information for the programmer, right? It doesn't have any like implementation. It has no implementation consequences uh, normally. Yeah. Uh, but we have a reflective system, so you can ask the system about all accessors or things which are not categorized. One of the things um, I showed here was uncategorized methods. So how do you create a new method again? Oh, sorry. Let's make an uncategorized method here. Um, in the browser, in the browser, I'm going to do a method which is called blah. Just write it down and then I save it. So I have a method blah. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, what does it mean if there is an exclamation mark and not the class symbol in the class uh, Yes. Um, <laughs> please comment me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so then that helps. That's the commands. Okay. Um, and of course, um, we are now looking at the instance side of the class uh, of a class. There might also be class side methods. So this open returns self new, which returns an instance of FFO browser tells that to, to create the browser and to open it on itself. So if I take here a look, then I have this browser. This browser this returns some kind of GLM tabulator, which has an open on method somewhere. This which has an open on method. Can you just go to the beginning again? <laughs> yes. Get the <new> complete. <laughs> I have a class side method open. That means that I don't have to tell the, op the class new to get an instance of that one. 
So in this workspace, I have Apple browser, which is the class, and I can directly tell it open. So it's like static method. It's yes, like static. It's just not static, but yeah, yeah. It's a dynamic, but yeah, like a static method. So yeah. I don't need an instance to call it. Yeah. So it's like a class method. It's like a class method. Yes. Yeah. And that was the that was the thing I wanted to explain. Uh, let's take a look. What uh, we have this? Okay. Then. Ah, then of course we want this logout button to do something. So please remove this method. Right mouse click. That means that we are implementing something which is defined up in the hierarchy. And on the yellow one, on the category of method initialization, the yellow one. That probably means that we should override something. That we have should be implemented somewhere. Uh, please remove this method. That works better for the. We, we should remove the logout. Yes. Otherwise, the exercise is going to be very boring. Is 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 refactoring somehow also good? Yes. Just take a look. It's the first one actually. This is wow. only on methods. Um, then we have a few more. Okay, that's not too bad. Yes, remove the method. So it means that nobody, no class, call this method. Hmm? You you succeed to remove the logout method. Does it mean that no, 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 the class and the message? Uh, no, this is not removing all logouts. This is only moving this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Can I just comment out this? Like, I don't want to remove the function, just comment out. <laughs> you could, uh, but then the exercise doesn't work. Okay. So we'll we'll rebuild it. Okay, it will find it. The and, the and, and. The method, but, uh, um, yes, please do. Then we go back and we have to log in again. And then log out. And then if we switch back to the image, we get the debugger. Mm -hmm. That's because I told this Seaside application that I want a debugger for that. The default is that it just ignores it, which is more secure. But for development, you want this debugger. So each mistake you have on the C site, on the on the website, you get directly reflected in the image, and you can just debug there and continue. Mm. So this tells me that it does not understand logout. That probably means that we need to create it. In the debugger, if we make it large enough, we get this plus symbol. Yeah. And there we can create logout. Just, just uh, let the code category be at the moment. There's a bug in there at the moment. And then the default implementation is itself should be implemented. Then we say accept.
Hai mai cătrin eu. Then we see, well, should be implemented, then we better do something there. Well, for the moment we do nothing. And accept again. And run. Oh, that is a nice one. Is now all your all your changes lost? Uh, not all changes are lost. We have uh, a couple of changes. There I can go back to everything that I saved as a method is can be recovered. So I could take a look. And fine. But there are at the moment not much interesting things which I want to have back in this image. But I could select the changes and file them in. What I probably should not have done is base this on the latest version of Faro 3.0, which is supposed to be released in March. I should have taken a more stable VM image. Yes. Uh, so. Yes. What is the dot at the end of the line? The dot is end of sentence. But you don't always have it. Uh, no, I only need it as a separator. Yes. I just got a glance that they have the postponed version. So I was going to ask um, yes. any way about versioning. And what, what you did there was something like school back. Yeah. From methods, I have only one version of this one in here. But if I make some changes, um, like I had this, I guess I have a few different versions of that. That's built in. That's built in. And uh, is it concurrent? I mean, if more people work on that? This is, this is on this image only. We have a distributed version management system uh, called uh, Monticello, which is somewhat older than Git. It's not as powerful as Git, but it does a job. Um, we have Metacello to do package management for that. And uh, uh, last week there was integration with Git, so we could uh, use Monticello from the image and just use a GitHub repository for that. And then we basically uh, put each method in a file, so that it might be slow if you have very large packages, but has very fine-grained uh, Version management, because the version management is all on the meta level. It's called Monticello. Monticello, yes. You can see it here. 
we have the Monticello browser, which shows us all packages. And where you get them from. Without this multi channel, you're not able to do like a proper version control or. Well, uh, you would be able to, but uh, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay. With, with Monticello, you just start making changes to your, uh, to your packages, and then you see the ones who have changed, and you find the place where you want to put them okay. in the repository, and then you commit them, have a commit message. I, I didn't check, but this, this, this image is a binary file? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what I did was I remove this, make this logout sum, and try again. Then we have nothing happen. Well, then we need to think about what we need there, and. Uh, we have login here, so we see there that there is something happening with a user. So, and it is asking it from self. So I can take a look at a hierarchy and see if user is defined somewhere. Not there, go there. Yes, here I have user, and that uses the session user. Well, perhaps I should take a look at all different implementers of user. And then take a look. Oh, here I find two different kinds of session. Well, this, asks, this tells it this is a subclass responsibility, so this is an abstract one, so I probably won't need that. And then I here have another session. And that tells me, hey, if this user if is nil, then something should happen, and otherwise we tell them that we are locked in. That suggests that if I tell the user to be nil, that the logout is going to work. So if I go back here and do self user nil, we can see if that works. With me it works. Yes. Uh, I, I see that the root that the, the component is the setter, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, the class in general, it's, uh, it's like it's everything protected, and you should put the setters, keep the setter, or is everything open? And uh, the instance variables are normally only reachable from the class itself. Okay. Yeah. So you need an accessor if you, you want to. Except if you use inheritance. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. And a announce as a as a method, is it? Yes. And and on self announce, what what did what did that do? It announce. It uses an announcements framework, which uh, tells interested parties that something happened. Okay. So you so can subscribe that. Yeah. 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 There are in small talks often quite a few different uh, mechanisms for doing this kind of thing. There is model, um, and there is announcements, but uh, modern style is to use announcements.
did that work? Is there something like code completion? Like, can I get code completion? Yes, yeah, it should be working. Might be slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you have code completion, but as it is a dynamically typed system, uh, it has to do some tricks to give you the right one. Um, so um, it tries to refer to things you already used recently, and uh, things which are in the same package. Um, and yeah, make sure that your method names are specific enough. Other questions? Yes. There is any problem if two instances of your developing environment access the same image? There's any problem? Like there's a log that you should like just one user access one image? You should not have the same image started twice because it will be writing both to the changes file and uh, it does it. No, 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 don't do, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it might go alright for quite some time. <laughs> so user is a field of the class, user is a field of the class. Hey, user is a field of the class. In the method level, so you define, so user is you wrote? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a field. Okay. It's a, this is an assignment. Yes, but yeah. user is a field of the class. Okay. What of the it's method. Okay. So it's everything method. is method. It's method. Yeah. Everything and is method. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you can see in the browser. The, so in the browser, I can see user. Uh, yes. User yes. You, you can find that. Yes. yes. But it's of course it's it's not defined here. But it's defined here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it delegates it to the session. So why there is two? So there is user and user with the two double dot. What is this the one returns the value and this is the setter. Access. So you have to get getter and a setter. Access. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There is a notion of visibility uh, for, for in, of a method. Which is a method is always public, or there is a methods are always public. Yeah. yeah, and there are some conventions for making clear that you are not supposed to use underscore, um, underscore kind, and you have a category oh. private. But it's only convention. It's convention, and of course because we have this analysis. Toolkit here running. You can check it at runtime uh, if people keep up with uh, conventions. Yeah. So you um, and that's much more powerful than just having the static uh, compile time uh, checks. You can you can do much more uh, <laughs> strong tests uh, for something. Yeah. The first release, the, re the first release of some some of small talk was when. When did you publish the first release? Smalltalk was standardized in 1980. With the browser, already with the browser. Yes, that was a version that looked quite similar to this. Yeah, it was not slow. It did not have so many colors, I think. But uh, and of course, at that time, it was really slow, even on <coughs> really expensive hardware. But 30 years later, uh, the time has come for small talk. What is the most important um, argument to use small talk nowadays? Um, for me, the most important argument is that it allows you to work with a very short feedback cycle. So you can test many hypotheses in a working hour and see if it works or not. So the, the main productivity for me is uh, this very short feedback loop, being able to write a test, implement it in the debugger and go on. It's very intense, but it's very, very powerful. It allows me to make very much speed. Do you use it for 
Uh, yes, uh, I used to have a, a gemstone uh, web uh, application running. Uh, I do uh, refactorings, uh, migrations, those kind of things. Um, where it's of course easier to sell all small pop uh, because nobody cares about the tools you use for uh, migrations. The performance is not as good as the ability to see. But if you have a problem which is limited by engineering time, and you have to build lots of software, not connect ready-made software together, then Smallbox is the tool to use. And, and which are the arguments that you use Smallbox instead of Ruby, for example? Like the guys, well, the they guys, they will give the same arguments? No, no, they don't have the tools. The, the feedback loop in Ruby is not as good as, uh, as in Smalltalk. Okay. On the other hand, there's support for using existing libraries. Okay. Yeah. So, if you only have to connect libraries together, then Smalltalk is at the moment not the tool to use. If you have to write a lot of code, customer specific, domain logic, lots of that, and you are not really performance critical, then Smalltalk is the language which has the best. Uh, and to deploy it in production, like a seaside application, like a web application running uh, seaside, how do you do it? Like, do you run it like a... Oh, you run multiple platform. images. Okay. And then connect. Well, the, the easy thing is to uh, just have an Oracle database behind it and uh, connect lots of images to it. Okay. As a, as a front end, and you have like a, a web server, like Nginx or Apache? Yes, we also have then an Nginx or something like that to deliver the static content because that they will do that much faster than a new language environment. Yeah. What about integrate? What about integrating small talk and uh, graphical user interface? Windows, uh, for instance, when, when you have an application with Windows and user interface, graphical user interface. Yeah. This is all text based now. Well, it's all text based. We have to search much bigger. Ah, I didn't see this. We have to actually use that. You can build a window with the. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. It's, it's not what I call pretty, but it works. So we have the back and door pre list. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, any more questions? We got to the first exercise. I have, I have a question. Uh, yeah? You said how can I trigger it? Normally I, I do uh, Yeah, it's control. Yeah, control space. Uh, it should be on, and if you wait while you're typing something, it should be on. I don't know. But the thing is, if, yeah? uh, um, if, you, if you have an instance of a class, yeah. and you want to um, know which method it has, okay, you can give go and say, okay, I'm not going to mean that. I see the method. But then I always have this uh, in the window or the screen browser. I, I thought it must be possible to be behind an instance and say, okay, now give me propose some methods for me that I could call. Uh, do I always have to start typing with any mist because I, I don't have any clue what I should call If you don't have any, then you should inspect it. Then you, then you know. Okay. But, yeah. And if you start typing, it will have a kind of So I don't get a code completion without type, having typed any, any first character. No. Not the current system. If you have things where you have real objects already instantiated, yeah, okay. you can do that. Because like for example, yeah. yes, for some yeah. time, yeah. Yeah. maybe more. We're trying yeah. the but test like size. Yeah. I get the yellow test. You get the yellow test. Yeah. But for me, yeah. it's just test yeah. finish. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
If you finish this exercise, then you can continue with the next exercise. Uh, I'll walk around. So that so, I look like this is a good line. So, yeah, I'm going to run across. Like, now I got the instance to see what is going to work. Yeah, it's okay. I, I ah, so, but there's a right. right. So, we all just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I was just saying that the next question is if there is a green reason to keep it because like you don't have any small talk in the other one because it's not that it's a good one. It's one slide is I asked people to present something and you tell them that it's not that the time is the time. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 Yeah, it has a 
But the provision has to talk to you. Yeah. Usually what you do want is a um, like conversion. That's, for example, um, let's say you have some kind of object and you want to be able to convert every object in the image to that like kind of object. In the so you would put these also okay ich habe